Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Deidre Malone, and I'm a Democrat, and I'm running for Shelby County Mayor. Um, you know me. I'm going to ask for your vote before I tell you what I'm going to do as the next mayor of Shelby County. What will be the priorities of the Malone administration? I plan on creating a supportive environment for education and work with school districts and the county commission to develop and implement a strategy to fund education. Advance pre-K, secure buy-in from the community on the need to expand it as well as fund it. Create jobs, because I do that anyway as a small business owner, and, be, and help create a better economy for Shelby Countyans by working closely with EDGE and the municipal mayors and the chambers to recruit businesses that offer high paying jobs because that's what we need and living wages for our citizens. Advocate for quality afford affordable health care, specifically when it comes to women's health care issues because we don't have enough elected women in office that can speak up on women's issues, specifically health care. A lot of men are making decisions about health care when it comes to women and we need more women elected officials to do that. Lead by working closely with the county commission to develop and implement great policies for Shelby County. Work closely with the Memphis mayor and other mayors to build coalitions to advance education, economic development, crime reduction, and health care to create a more efficient government. Why is Deidre Malone the only Democratic candidate in this race that can beat the incumbent Republican mayor? Because I have a strong track record when it comes to finding solutions and getting things done. I understand the needs of Shelby County citizens. I'm a leader, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I was elected by my peers as the first African American woman to chair the county commission. And I'm the first female to actually chair the budget committee. I am the leader at this time that will take a stand on important issues that mean most everything to you. I ask for your vote today. I ask for your prayers. I won't let you down. I need your vote in this primary, and I'm the only one that can take it to the incumbent Republican mayor and beat him. Shelby County Mayoral Candidate Steve Romer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Virgie. Good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? Thanks to the Democratic Women of Shelby County for putting on this forum. They're a great organization. I support them very much. I'm particularly fond, as I've said before, of the woman who does the uh, social media for the DWSC. She's over there. Raise your hand. Her name is also Mulroy, so I'm a big fan of hers. Uh, I'm also a big fan of the IBEW, and I thank them for uh, lending the space, as they so often do. They're always there for us, for the Democratic Party. I've been proud to have the IBEW's support every time I've run for county commissioner, and I've used their hall a number of times. I appreciate them as well. You know, in two minutes, it's not going to be possible for me to go over my record and my demonstrated record on the county commission of being the activist, progressive, the most democratic of democratic people on the county commission. I think if you uh, look at any of the flyers that are back there, or you check my, out my website, uh, stevemolroy.com, you can find that stuff out. So in the limited time that I have, I want to tell you a quick story. One of the reasons it inspired me to run for county mayor, I co collaborated with my colleagues over on the city council side, Lee Harris and Jim Strickland, to do this urban blight program where we would uh, be loaning out small amounts of money to incentivize really blighted properties, but the money would be paid back immediately in the form of tax payments, so it wouldn't really cost us anything. It passed unanimously on the city council side, I thought it would have been easy to pass on the county commission side, but I got resistance from my Republican colleagues, and I got resistance from our current Republican county mayor. And when I said to him, wait a minute, it's not going to cost us any money. A little money goes out, and a week later the money comes back. What's the problem? He said, it might cause some cash flow issues. And I thought to myself, if this program were from Mitsubishi or Electrolux, would they be nitpicking about cash flow issues? No way. No way. And it tells you something about the priorities of Republicans and the priorities of Democrats. And I decided it was time to change those priorities to get a Democratic county mayor who pushes Democratic priorities. And those are the priorities I'm going to push if I become Shelby County Mayor. Priorities like the Democratic Party's always stood for, the rights of the worker, the rights of the environment, things of those nature. Those are the kind of priorities that I'm going to push for you. We need a Democratic county mayor, we deserve a Democratic county mayor, and with your assistance, 
I will get us a Democratic County Mayor. Thank you very much. Ladies and, ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen, in the absence of our third candidate running for Shelby County Mayor, Dr. Kenneth T. Whalen, we have Ms. Kristen Cheers serving as proxy on his behalf. Good afternoon. My name is Kirsten Cheers, and I am a representative of the mayoral campaign for Dr. Kenneth T. Whalem Jr. He apologizes for his absence. He is currently in Washington, D.C. I did not hesitate to stand for Dr. Whalem on today. As many of you know, he is a man of God, but also he is a man of, in of integrity. Dr. Whalem realizes that we are in a state of emergency and urgency, educationally, morally, and fiscally. He is committed to standing for the children of, Je of Shelby County. As a former Shelby County board member, School board member, he is a strong advocate for education equity, believing all children, regardless of socioeconomic status, have the right to a quality education. He believes in giving young people a platform to have a voice in Memphis, offering more opportunities for the native young Memphian to become educated and successful. What opens the door for a better Memphis is the formidable education system, and he is committed to rebuilding our school system. He is an advocate for minority businesses. He is committed to promoting entrepreneurship throughout the minority business community. Lastly, he is an advocate for equal rights among the sexes. As stated before in your last meeting, he is committed to closing the wage gap between men and women. He believes in native young Memphians staying in Memphis. He believes that not only should we have to recruit outside of Memphis to bring in new talent, but we should nurture the talent that's already here. In his own words, he is Memphis bred, Memphis fed, and when he dies, he'll be Memphis dead. And we look for your vote. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kirsten. We have two questions for the candidates for Shelby County Mayor. Um, first and foremost, I was remiss in my earlier introduction with, with just uh, uh, an important housekeeping point, and that is I want to make it clear that the candidates are being called up for each, each cadre of candidates are being called up by the order that they're listed on the, on the ballot. I'm not doing my thing up here. I'm following instructions. So having said that, the first question for the mayoral candidates is, what is your position on consolidation of dual government and city government and county government? And the candidates can speak to that in any order they would like. Same order? Yeah. Same order. That sounds good. Well, uh, when I was chairman of the commission, I did the town hall meetings with Mayor Wharton and at the time Chairman Lowry when the consolidation issue was on the ballot. I do believe that, not sure it will happen in our lifetime, but I do believe that there are efficiencies that would be gained if we had a consolidated government. And when you think about it, Germantown, Bartlett, Arlington, all of those cities are already incorporated. So we're really talking about you know, a small sense of government in terms of unincorporated Shelby County. It makes sense to look at um, working with the city of Memphis as the county mayor and the county commission to see what efficiencies we can come together to implement to save the taxpayers money because we are looking at, you know, dual taxes, city and county. Thank you. Amen. I favor consolidation, and I do think it'll happen in our lifetime. There are a lot of efficiencies to be gained by consolidating city and county governments. We don't need two mayors, we don't need two uh, county city attorneys, we don't need two HR directors, et cetera, et cetera. And the experience shows that there are cities like Nashville and Louisville and Jacksonville. They surged ahead while we stagnated, and the reason is they consolidated and we didn't. It won't cause savings overnight but it will cause savings over the long term and allow us to lower our property tax rates the way they have over the decades in Nashville, Jacksonville, and Louisville. It'll also have another advantage too because we, we want to incentivize development. We want people to invest from outside Shelby County. We want not two different bureaucracies for them to deal with. We want one set of, one bureaucracy. It'll be more efficient in terms of branding and recruiting outside areas and it'll also get us away from this us versus them mentality that I think has dragged us back. We spent we spent millions of dollars over the years suing each other, the city and the county. That needs to stop. That needs to stop and it can stop with consolidation. I think in the interim we can do things like functional consolidation to help us get there on an interim basis. So we can consolidate uh, things like code enforcement and fire and police and things of that nature. 
And I think that uh, over the long term, thank you, we're going to get there um, maybe sooner than you think. Thank you. Pastor Whalem, Dr. Whalem, I'm sorry. Um, on his view on consolidating the government, he is opposed, and he is very honest and strong in his view. Um, he believes in strengthening um, Memphis, Tennessee. He believes in strengthening our government and what we do have. He believes in strengthening our inner city. He believes in strengthening our county. He will stand, he will work with um, all views, um, but he is opposed to consolidating the government. <coughs> Uh, excuse me. Uh, before the last question, uh, the candidate, the next group of candidates, when they uh, exit from up here, would you come up and uh, take the seats up here? And we're gonna Thurston will tell you the order in which to do it. As education has been a resounding, uh, or if you will, a central theme uh, uh, among the discussion in Shelby County for quite some time, obviously we couldn't have it, a series of questions without having one obviously on education. So having said that, the second question for the mayoral candidates is, uh, relevant to pre-K, how as a mayoral candidate will you A, implement pre-K, and secondly, um, B, how would you fund it? Well, I think we know that there have been two referendums um, in terms of pre-K and both of them have failed. I think that what we need to do, and as, as someone who believes in you know, putting a lot of heads to de together and being at the table and discussing what our options are, I believe it's important to put together a group to determine, you know, how are we going to do it? It won't take overnight. We've learned that with the two referendums, the countywide referendum, that it failed, but it, it passed outside of Memphis with a sales tax, but it failed within, um, with, within Memphis, well, it failed and outside of Memphis, um, but so, so my point is, it will take us some time to come together and look at what other funding mechanisms we can have to fund pre-K. Um, sales tax would have worked, um, but you know I think it takes more time to explain to people and have an adequate quick campaign on why it's so important for us to do it, and that'll be one of the first things that I do. I think the experience of the two referenda basically showed this. The public actually believes in the value of pre-K and early childhood education. They just don't think we should use a regressive sales tax to pay for it. So the question is, how do we fund it? Simple. We just fund it. We just fund it. We just need to just decide to fund it. We have a county government which has a $1.2 billion budget. A general fund that's about $370 million. That's discretionary. I think that a progressive county government working with the Democratic Majority County Commission can find $5 million a year, $5 million a year to pay towards pre-K. And then working cooperatively with some contributions from the city of Memphis, and then matching funds from the federal government and maybe some private sources, we could get up to something like seven, eight, ten million dollars. And that's about one-third of the way towards universal uh, pre-K. And having done that, and having demonstrated in a track record of a year or two of how successful it is, then I think we'll create the political will for prioritizing it more. And we will eventually, like with consolidation, ultimately that will happen. We're going to get there to universal pre-K. Thank you. Unfortunately, I honestly cannot answer that for you. However, I will send the question to Dr. Whalem, and I bet you that he will get the answer to you, and we will get that out for you. Thank you.